Hello, a very warm welcome to today's Scottish Golf Zoom panel, where we'll focus on the government's new kickstart scheme. I'm Ian Evans, Club Business Manager at Scottish Golf, and I'll be your host again today. On today's call, I'm delighted to be joined by Alison Bennett from the Scotland Devolution and Partnership Team and Alex Warren from the WISE Group, who will be providing clubs with information on the government's kickstart scheme, which aims to offer uh, which aims at offering young people aged 16 to 24 a fully funded six month work placement. A kickstart scheme application must be for a minimum of 30 job placements and Scottish Golf recognises that a single club and employer would not be able to provide this many job placements. Therefore, we're looking to gauge interest from clubs of Scotland to understand whether this is a project that we can work on collectively to reach this number. If there's sufficient interest from the golf industry in Scotland, Scottish Golf would aim to facilitate this through a representative. Employers can spread the, the start date of the job placements up until the end of December 2021. We'd like to thank all the clubs for attending today, and should you wish to express your interest in utilising the Kickstart scheme, the Kickstart scheme, we provided a link uh, to a short form to fill in following today's webinar. So before we get started, I'd like to introduce our panellists. Firstly, I'd like to introduce Alex Warren, who is the Strategic Development Director at the WISE Group. The WISE Group is one of Scotland's biggest social enterprises and is focused on lifting people out of poverty and making lasting positive changes to people's lives. He's been with the WISE Group for over 12 years and is fiercely passionate about the work they do. He's responsible for the leadership, direction and management of all strategic business development, a wide foundation for the sustainable delivery of social impact and growth across the business. Alex has a real passion for social justice and has spent much of his career focusing on and devising and delivering programmes that deliver social impact. Alex is also on the board of the directors of the Ard Glen Housing Association in Glasgow, whose understanding of the challenges faced by those in or on the fringes of poverty, he's committed to playing a part in delivering social change and ensuring that no one suffers inequality due to their circumstances. Hi Alex, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me. Introducing secondly, I'm delighted to say we also have Alison Bennett. Now Alison is suffering some technical issues, uh, so her video isn't working, but we can hear her. Uh, to get her uh, her expertise, which is the main thing. Uh, Alison is part of uh, the Scotland Devolution Partnership Team, where one of her responsibilities is the newly announced Kickstart scheme. Alison is also the lead for redundancies, pace and rapid response service across Scotland as a, as a result of COVID-19, and, and her role is to support employers and customers linked with partners across Scotland to seamlessly support them uh, from the threat of redundancy back to work. Alison is relatively new to this role, having previously an employer, employer advisor at Kilmarnock Job Centre for 15 years, where she was responsible for advertising and filling employers' vacancies across East Ayrshire, dealing with redundancies and supporting the work coaches. Alison has also has over 28 years in the civil service, working in various roles before this job centre. Hello, Alison. Thank you for coming on. No problem. Thank you. Afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, this is a brief snapshot of the, of the experience of today's panel. And thank you both again for joining us. The format of today's call will be Q&A and Alison. We've received numerous pre-submitted questions from attendees, and sh but should you have any uh, questions during the call, you'll be able to submit these in the Q&A function below. Just click on the button and type in your question, and we'll try to get round to as many as possible. Okay, getting into the questions. Alison, I'd like to start with you. Can you give us uh, an overview of what the Kickstart scheme is? Yeah, no problem. So the Kickstart scheme um, was announced by the UK government um, back in September. So the Chancellor has put forward £2 billion pounds, um, as part of COVID um, to try and get our 16 to 24 year olds who are on universal credit um, to prevent them from becoming long term unemployed. So what they offer is, is 25 hours at the national minimum wage for 26 weeks. Um, so the idea is we get as many young people um, and are looking for ideally about 10,000 starts in November and then as many going forward um, right up to December of 2021. So employers can take on as many youngsters as they, they like um, in roles that will be matched to by um, our work coaches. So the idea is that a gateway organisation um, can submit a bid or support more or smaller employers um, to put in bids for as many placements as they want. Um, these jobs will then be advertised only on universal credit. Uh, they will be matched specifically. Um, so you're talking roughly sort of five to eight people um, will be getting matched to each vacancy that comes on. Um, the employer gets to choose how they want to advertise, um, whether it's CV, um, one to one, Zoom call, whatever they want, and they ultimately choose who they want as well. Um, they might not 
won't end the day that's end the referred to them so then they would go back and, and look at that again. But ultimately the employer has the final choice. So as well as the wages um, getting paid for 26 weeks, the employer gets £1,500 and that's um, bespoke for training or any wraparound support for the young person um, and it could get them any certificates that's relevant to the job. Um, if someone doesn't need any particular training or just ready to go into the job, it can be utilised for, and we've got many examples that's come up, so if somebody needed to work from home, we could fund a laptop, and we could fund the extra hours, and if the employer wanted to take them on full time, and it could be funded for really pretty much anything to help that youngster either sustain themselves in employment for the future or after the six months. We've had various um, master classes with the likes of Skills Development Scotland. So the ideal scenario here is after the six months if the employer wants to keep the youngster on, then we would look to kind of link in with any of our local authorities or Skills Development Scotland to then go into a modern apprenticeship or any other funding to keep that youngster as long as possible and ultimately get them a permanent job at the end of it. Okay, so I've answered um... a few questions. Sorry. No, I was going to just, uh, sorry, I do like first of all bring in Alex uh, if I can at the moment. Alex, um, many clubs are entering what, what we're kind of calling a recovery phase at the moment after a difficult trading season. Do you see the scheme as something that they can leverage to help them recover from what's been a difficult year? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, the um, clubs and your members will have been um, sadly part of some of the sectors that have been ravaged by the impacts of COVID. Um, and like the other businesses, um, met all of the, I suppose, people listening about recovery. How do we build towards that recovery? Um, and we re we recognise, and any business um, leader will recognise that making commitments at this point is really challenging. But that's where I think we can all recognise an advantage of Kickstart in that there's, there's this opportunity. Not only does it help lots of young people back towards sustainable work, but also employers to so the clubs can look at bringing in people with little to no investment, no financial risk, but help to build back towards that recovery because things will get better. We know that we just don't know when. So the, it, it, it's not a it's not a can I make this decision? Should I make this decision? Does this decision make financial sense? It this is this is a straightforward you know I would, I would almost say no brainer that um, allows clubs to say yeah I could I could bring in that additional capacity. At the same time, I'll be helping a young person, giving them a really good opportunity. And then it helps to also build that, that pipeline of, of talent to the club as well. So there's nothing to say that after that six months is up from this placement that you, you, you wouldn't want to keep that young person on, that you've, um, you, know, you now know them, they know you, and there's an opportunity to build into maybe different parts or longer term work. So uh, I think it's a great opportunity to focus on recovery. Absolutely. And in six months time, that'll be almost well, pretty much back into the new golf season and hopefully touch with yeah. club, um, behind us and clubs are able to thrive again. So that's it's a really good time. I couldn't agree with you more for the golf industry to grasp this opportunity. Alison, if I can come back to you, can you tell us a bit about, um, you know, the, the recruitment uh, process? Yeah, sure. So the employer can recruit really whatever way they want. These are real jobs, so whatever way they would normally recruit, um, they can recruit. The only thing we don't really advise is online recruitment um, because then we lose control of that. So the customers are only coming from Universal Credit, so they're the only customers that are eligible. Um, but the employer ultimately, if they want an application form, a CV, if they want to see someone, um, if they want you know, to do an interview over Skype, whatever way suits the employer, then we can organise that. It's ultimately up to them how they want to do it. Okay, got it. And you mentioned this a little earlier, but just to be clear for the clubs, how much influence would a club have on the shortlisting and eventual offer of employment for the candidates? I mean, for can the club, for example, select their own candidate? Yeah, um, as long as they come from universal credit and they're referred, then yes, they are the ones that ultimately choose. But they can't just like take somebody they know or whatever they've got to be signing on um, and claiming universal credit. If somebody was not working, um, what they would then say to well, go and speak to your work coach and they'll refer you. But it has to be someone that's on um, universal credit. Right. So I guess that a lot of the heavy lifting is done um, by yourselves. And so the club would um, signal their their interest. And then you would then, and, and what post they can offer, you would then create that shortlist. Is that is that accurate? Yeah. So what happens is once um, the bid's been approved, so by the gateway and, and the employers, 
the our central team will contact the employers and just get all the job descriptions. So then um, our central team will then upload them to the universal credit system and then our work coaches will match. So it's not a case of, you know, you're going to get 50 or 100 CVs or whatever. We will specifically only be matching people who have got the relevant skills to that job. That's why it's only a small amount between five to eight people. So those people should all have exactly what the employer's looking for. And then ultimately the employer picks one of them if they want. They don't, they don't have to. Certainly clubs who are, you know, stretched with their own capacity, as you mentioned, Alex, that's a really good benefit for you, giving them uh, that support and creating that shot. So just lastly on this particular uh, point, Alison, um, operation, how is the funding received by the, the employer or in our case, the club and when? So what happens is there's um, £1,800. So the £1,500 that I spoke about earlier for training a wraparound support and then the gateway organisation gets £300 per placement and that's sort of an admin fee. So that £1,800 gets paid to the gateway organisation within the first week of the customer starting. Okay, so then it's up to the gateway organisation to then give that £1,500 back to the employer for any wraparound or training support if the employer's going to do that. If they're happy for the gateway organisation to do any training, that's a conversation between the two of them, whether they split that or whether they allow the gateway organisation to keep that and, and do any training. Um, with the, where the wages are concerned is, the wages will be paid to the gateway organisation and then the income pay the employer and that's monthly in arrears. Okay, excellent. And then uh, you mentioned the support there for a young person. Alex, if I can bring you in, uh, obviously this is a, a great opportunity for clubs. You mentioned capacity, getting, you know, new, um, you know, motivated young people in, into, into the club employment. But obviously it's very important to support that young person. What support is there for that young person? <clears throat> yeah, it's absolutely crucial that there's that support for the young person and that, you know, that's, that's the equal focus of, of Kickstart that the young people who take part and, and are successful in taking up these kickstart roles, um, fundamentally at the end of it, they are more employable, they're more confident, they're more um, able to move towards longer term sustainable work. Um, so it's, it's crucial that um, the young person gets support throughout that six month journey. Now, as Alison pointed out, that's something that um, employers can do themselves, you know, um, that they can, they can not only, it's about creating that role for the young person to come into, but facilitating that wraparound support, um, particularly employability support. So ensuring that that person, um, their employability prospects, employability skills are increased. So we're talking about things like um, CV writing support, job search support, um, focus on things like self-confidence and mindset, teamwork, communication, these kinds of things. There will be a range of skill sets that come through, um, through Kickstart. People where this is their first job, there'll be people where it's not their first job, they've been in employment before or, or for some reason they've fallen out, you, um, likely because of COVID. So that, that wraparound support, that employability support is crucial. And it's one of the things, it's one of the fundamental reasons that the Wise Group has taken an interest and in, is getting involved in that uh, quick start. It's absolutely cool to be providing that wraparound support. Indeed, and I think you've you mentioned that you touched on it there. Um, so how on, how hands-on does the club have to be, obviously, other than providing you know safe working environment and, and the role and what have you how well hands on do they have to be with the employees um, it, i mean that's it, it's it's i suppose it's a choice of fundamentally so um most most clubs will um opt to have to work with a gateway um organization like ourselves as many other organizations doing this because they won't be creating 30 roles um across the club so they can have that that discussion with a gateway organization like us and you know I'm, and our offer um, as part of our kickstart involvement is that we will deliver that wraparound support, that employability support to the young people on behalf of the clubs. So therefore it doesn't become a responsibility they have to take. But fundamentally that is a choice. If they wanted to do that themselves, they can. Um, but I suppose um, I'll come back to the point of why we're in, we, are, we have an interest in the scheme and why we're involved. This is our area of expertise. This is what we do. We've been doing it for nearly 40 years. So we know that we can provide that high quality wraparound support to those young people whilst the employers provide a high quality um, training and working environment for that young person during their six months. So fundamentally, it's a really good opportunity um, without any additional burden or additional um, effort on behalf of the employer, but to fulfil all the requirements of Kickstart. Indeed, well, that's, that's really great information. And Alison, I can just go back to you. This is a, a, we try and group the questions, of course, because in, into subjects in advance, but this is a specific one. And the question is, um, 
Between what dates can we employ the young person? Our requirement is usually seasonal. Alison, are you, are you there? <laughs> on mute, I think. Uh, Alison, are you, are you, I think you're on mute, Alison. Nope, she's not there. Um, I'll wait to you, I'll, I'll, uh, we can come back to that one um, when Alison um, comes back. Uh, back in, we'll just go on, unless you want to talk to that one yourself, Alex, if you... Yeah, um, my understanding is that the, the programme itself will go live um, by mid-November, so the middle of next month. Um, and the, the last date that a young person can be taken on, I believe, if Alison comes back and proves me wrong, is December 2021. Okay. Um, so then staying with you and Alex, um, what happens at the end of, of, of six months? Well, at the end of the six months, I suppose it's um, it's partly down to the club. You know, there's a, um, a great success story would be that the um, the club wanted to keep that young person on longer term um, and and give them an opportunity. You know, Alison mentioned before, there's a great opportunity and there's, a, there's, there's greater incentives right now to look at like modern apprenticeships through Skills Development Scotland. Okay. Um, and thought to that then, Alex, is there any restriction on when a person or when the person can work or is that at the discretion of the club based on the rule? No, I mean, it's, um, I, I suppose I was thinking about, I think about that in a different way, that the Kickstart um, programme offers 25 hours a week of paid um, employment at national minimum wage plus all of the auto enrolment and um, national insurance. But it's about the, the deeds of that, that job and... Um, what the club requires. So they would be creating the role. So therefore they would be specifying what the expectations were. That's then used by the work coaches and the job centres to help match the right people to those roles. So not necessarily there's a there's a restriction. Um, it's about getting the right person. Okay, indeed. Just to check if Alison, you're back with us? Nope, she's not back with us. So what we'll do is obviously, Alex, with your experience of the Kickstarter team, if I could put to you uh, some of the questions we were going to put to um, Alison, and if you don't know the answer, that's absolutely fine. We'll be able to put that in the FAQs afterwards. Um, do you know, uh, Alex, if, if a business can pay the new member of staff more than the minimum wage, for example, if they're committed to a living wage? Yeah, absolutely, they can. Um, and I've, I've had many conversations about this already, and I would actively encourage it. I think it's great. Um, so obviously the, the scheme itself covers the national minimum wage for that person at the age that they're at and the, the auto enrollment. Um, but if the club is the living wage employer or just has a higher salary band and doesn't want to pay the national minimum wage, then yes, absolutely, they can pay greater than that. Um, the, the key consideration here as the employer is that that responsibility falls to the employer. So if it's two pounds an hour extra, then the employer pays that two pounds an hour extra plus all of the auto enrollment um, costs of that. But no, they absolutely can. Um, and just to, to add to that question, can they pay more, more than 25 hours? Yes, they could. Same applies. That anything above that 25 hours in a week would be the responsibility of the employer. Excellent. Um, would, would you know if the training, Alex, would be uh, included in the 25 hours per week, the initial training for that new employee? Yeah, as far as I'm aware, the, 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 the guidance that the, the DWP have issued is that they... Um, the, the training can be part of the 25 hours a week. So um, it can be included um, in terms of um, any of that point during the week that that young person was working. Um, and I think to put our own slant on this and the way that we are looking at this um, and we see success in, in, in providing that training for the young person, it's about flexibility. So we're very much building that offer of our wraparound support that we can provide to young people. So they can dip in and out of it as they need, as to suit their needs, to suit the needs of the employer as well, and to avoid any issue of disruption to the role, disruption to the running of the, the club. Excellent. I think we've got Alison back in. Alison, are you there? Hello. Hi. Hello. Okay, we'll come to you in just a second. Thank you very much. Don't worry, that's the beauty of technology. Alex, just on that <laughs> connected question, I'll stay with you for a second. You talk about the wraparound support, the support for the, the, the young person, the employee. On the completion of the six month, will there be any support um, to link with apprenticeship schemes, for example? Yeah, um, um, there's a we will we will always be um, point you know in terms of the wrapper support that we will we'll offer to young people. We'll always be pointing towards them towards the right places to get additional support. Um, and that there's there's a there's a myriad of different um, opportunities you know certainly in Scotland for supporting young people towards employment. Um, apprenticeships is one of those but at the same time the employers can engage in this as well 
Um, I believe that Alison can fill in the, the, the details and, and um, more of an expert on this, but skills development in Scotland are incentivizing um, the uptake of, of um, modern apprenticeships at the moment. So enhanced payments to employers, so the clubs, for um, um, putting young people into those modern apprenticeships. So you can have a scenario where Kickstart almost acts as that first subsidized six months of that apprenticeship. Then you move into um, that longer term. Um, again, it reduces the need to make quick commitments at this point in time because you, you know, as you say, that recovery phase, you can move through that first six months with a young person providing them an opportunity, but little or no financial investment required. So really positive. Okay. Thank you very much, Alison. Um, uh, Alex was very kind in answering a couple of the questions while you're away, but just to put a couple of questions to you. The question is, uh, is it limited to one position per club or could a club apply for multiple positions? They can have as many as they want. There's no limit on it at all. Fantastic. Um, and uh, Alison, does taking, this is a specific question for club, does taking part in the scheme affect your position of a, as a living wage employer? No, it doesn't. Short and sweet, right to the point. Perfect. Um, <laughs> if, uh, sorry, if, uh, say we ask, do you know if there's any uh, limitation on the type of role that a club could, uh, that a club could um, get a young person? Just so for example, sc uh, golf clubs in Scotland can have an array of different skills. You could work in retail in the shop. You could be in catering provision. You could be in golf course management, greenkeeping, in marketing and actually selling the product of membership and tea times. There's a whole range of different potential jobs there. I just wonder is there is, is it um, limited the, the different types of roles that a club could um, create a position for? No, I mean these are real jobs. So just any job at all, um, you know, the, the more the merrier. Really, there's no um, limit on what type of job it is. It's, it's literally anything a club would need um, can be advertised. These are real jobs, even though it's kickstart, and um, they are treated as real jobs. So just whatever a club would normally be, be looking for, that can be advertised. So anything at all. And in, in your experience in working with young people in the sector, Alex, is there that skill set right across the board that would be, you would have that variation of people looking for different opportunities? Yeah, and I think, um, yeah, you know, we've got decades of experience of doing this kind of thing, but I said we've never operated in the times that we're operating in right now. So there will be a myriad of skill sets and experiences, I think, from the people that are interested in taking up these roles. I think probably to add to yeah, your question, um, I think from a from a, set, a, a logical point of view, it, bearing in mind that it's a six month, as a, I suppose as a, a, a minimum, it's a six month placement. So um, if that job takes a long time to learn, a long time to get to grips to and, and requires intensive training, it might be um, more challenging to get people into. It's not to say it's impossible and there is no restriction, as Alison said, um, but um, it's one of those things to bear in mind um, around how long it would take to a young person to settle into those. Um, but as long as when you're working with working with the Gateway or working with the DWP, to be clear about what the, the skill sets, any specific skill sets or characteristics, traits that would be um, that would help a young person to be successful in that role, is making sure we're clear on those. Then that allows that matching process to be even more successful um, as the young people are put forward for the for the roles. Yeah, and one would hope that. As an entry level position, uh, simply having an interest or a passion for a certain topic, whether that be the retail or the golf course, or that would be a relevant um, thing that. Um, yeah. you know, Absolutely. TV. Absolutely. So, Alison, come back to a couple of more specific questions. Um, if a young person leaves the placement early, does the employer have to replace them, or indeed are they allowed to replace them with a new start? So they don't. Um, they don't have to replace them. Um, they can replace them if they want. Um, if somebody's not suitable, they can say, you know, halfway through or whatever, if it's not working out between the two of them, look for somebody else, whatever. But the 1500 if somebody leaves, say, to take up a permanent post or the job's just not right for them, the £1,500 doesn't have to be paid back, just to kind of make that clear as well. Um, but, yeah, they, they don't have to take somebody on, but ultimately, if they want somebody to replace them, yes, they can get them. OK, and if a club were to run into, you know, HR issues such as attendance or conduct or what have you, is there any support? Um, what, if any, support would they get for this? Well, that because they are an employee um, of the company, the normal HR procedures with that employer would apply. So it would just be standard um, HR with the, the employer. OK. Um, fantastic. I mean, that actually brings to the end of our, our pre-submitted question. I just want to give you the opportunity, Alex or Alison, to have a, a final say uh, on the topic of the Kickstarter team. Alex, you got anything you want to add at the end? 
Um, yeah, I suppose it, it, uh, um, it's a it's a final push really for um, for the members for the clubs to really have a think about this because it is a um, it is an excellent opportunity not only as an employer as a club but for young people for hopefully thousands tens of thousands of young people um, across Scotland and across the UK more widely um, at a time where they are disproportionately hit more than anyone in an economic sense around employment by COVID. So um, I urge you to have a think about this, um, digest the information from today. If there's further questions, which inevitably there might be, um, please feel free to get in touch with, um, with, certainly with me, with us, the WISE Group, um, and we'll be happy to, to talk to clubs more about um, anything you want to discuss on Kickstarter, or fundamentally just help them to engage with the programme if that, if that is something that is of interest. So um, that's for me. Fantastic, and we'll we'll uh, we'll send out your details with Falk this, and that's a really uh, thank you for that offer of uh, future information and support for clubs. Um, uh, Alison, just a final word. We'll give you the opportunity for a final word before we close. Just to say, I mean, we've got uh, unprecedented amounts of unemployment at the moment. We've got youngsters who have never come near a job centre before. They've, they've worked all their life, and due to the current pandemic, they find themselves out of work. So we've got real high um, experience out there who are just dying to be back working so this is a, a great opportunity to you know get a youngster on board and you know the years I've been in the department I've never um, really a, a scheme like this where we're, we're actually fully funded six months for youngsters and giving you know this £1,500 training opportunity so I would say employers at a difficult time financially as well just jump at the chance because there are really good people out there um, that you, you could take on and, and work with and, and just not show them into hopefully giving them a, a permanent regular seasonal opportunity. Absolutely. And I, I couldn't agree more. It sounds such a, a really exciting scheme. Um, Alex used the, the words earlier on, no brainer. I couldn't agree more when clubs have, you know, finances have been tight. They've, they've had to almost reduce, in some cases reduce staff levels. Uh, this is an opportunity through the recovery phase into next season when hopefully the income will increase again back to its previous level for you to get that extra capacity in any role across the whole club's business and that for me is absolutely key so uh, ladies and gentlemen that brings us to uh, the end of today's zoom panel call we'd like to thank Al alex and allison once again for joining us for their valuable insight into the new kickstart scheme as mentioned at the beginning a kickstart scheme application must be for a minimum of 30 job placements and scottish golf recognizes that a single club employer uh, won't be able to provide that many job placements Therefore, we're looking to gauge interest from clubs across Scotland to understand whether there's a project we can work collectively on to reach this number. So we really would encourage clubs who are interested in the Kickstart scheme to complete the short form that we'll be sending out following today's call to express their interest. And don't forget, uh, if you'd like to catch up on any of our previous webinars, you can watch them all on our website, scottishgolf.org. So thank you for tuning in. Stay safe and a very good day to you. And Alison uh, and Alex, thank you again. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.